Good day, everyone. Um, hope everyone is having a lovely day. Today, um, I just want to quickly bring it to you what is currently going on um, in the country, which is Nigeria. Uh, currently, um, currently, I want to talk about Peter B, but I just want to quickly dive in into uh, what they asked uh, our former. Uh, President Obisegun Obasanjo, and they asked him whether he want to, uh, whether he can go for the third times, uh, if if he want to become another new Nigerian's president. And what uh, President Obisegun Obasanjo said, look, I'll be honest with you, I am audacious, and bold. He believe he has that overconfidence and is brave enough to secure at all times in office as Nigerian president. But Mr. Lucia Gomba Sonjo, I don't think Nigerians will want to vote for you this time around. I uh, just have to be clear and I believe Nigerians is not going to have at the back of your, their minds to vote. Not because you don't have the caliber, confidence and the ability to rule Nigerians and because of your age. So, and because of the energy that is going to involve, the travels, the decisions, and you, at this time of your age, I don't think Nigeria will want to vote for you. When you are young, uh, when you are young, yes, I think Nigerians can. But because you have reached a stage where Nigerians cannot consider a, a kind of a man that have reached uh, more than 80 years old uh, to now become Nigerian's president. Even if you have the opportunity and you have the opportunity and you want to go for the third time. I don't think it can happen. But that was the question they asked uh, Odusha Gumabasanjo. I think the meeting was organized uh, by an African leader group on Thursday. Uh, and, and he said, I will I'll never ask for a third time. And if I want a third time, I will got it. I, I'm, I'm bold and audacious enough to know how to get it. Uh, yes, you can be bold, you can be audacious, you can be brave, you can be overconfident, you can be brave. But unfortunately, I don't think Nigerians at this moment, we want to vote for you. And he also uh, refuted the claim that he wanted a third times as a president of Nigeria. That he didn't say that, that he doesn't want to go for third times as a president of Nigeria. But I believe he's not going to get it. And nothing on constitution that was perfect. Um, and it called for amendment of 1999 constitutions. Some people blame the constitution for everything in Nigerians, which we all know that the constitution does not actually favor the old geographical regions in Nigerians. And of course, our constitution is not perfect. And there's no constitutions that is uh, sacrosanct, and it more can be amended. 1999 constitutions have dragged Nigerians into this uh, graveyard mess that we currently find ourselves, because that constitution does not actually favor some religions or some part of the nations. So, and already they have been calling for amendment in that constitution, especially amendment that are relating to devolution of power. Uh, Nigerians are currently clamoring for various solutions, including the structuring to, uh, to numerous so political, economic, and social challenges. Devolution of power to the local government, uh, which is what Nigerians are definitely clamoring for, are praising the local government autonomous under the Nigerian federalism because the federalism systems is just to make sure that this power is not centralized on the central government that devolution of powers across across all regions and if you look at it under the federal states or two or more levels of government are created and one at the national level and the other at the regional or sub-national level described by various states uh, we also have the province, uh, we also have the sub-regional as well as the local units. Uh, the, sub, the local units we know in Nigeria is called the local government. Uh, sometimes also my, my municipal, the councils, the, the counties, 
which we don't normally use with Nigerians, and we use counties in, uh, in some other countries. Uh, we have counties in UK, we have counties in Americans, and the districts. Uh, we have the province, uh, we have the cities, we have the township, we have the borough, we have the parish. Uh, we also have the village as well. And it just matter the government powers and the functions are located to, the, to these levels of government. And this is a form of devolution of power. And further system of government uh, organization, we know, encourage devolution of powers among the central national government. And other regional or decentralized government is just a manner the government powers and functions are shared among these two or more levels of government according to the levels of government independence and autonomy in this respective sphere by the means of the constitutional allocations. And we also know that anything that relating to the devolution of power is under the federal arrangement seek to transfer political, administrative, economic autonomy from the central to the local community. Anything that we also further to seek to promote popular participations in any decision making so that the local government can also have their own decision making. They have, can have the powers, they can also control the local economy, and they can also implement uh, uh, a kind of additional taxes which has to be in line with the national taxes. And that will also encourage accountability as well and also an enable the resources uh, to go to the local, local communities um, so that the local community can also benefit as well. And the autonomy is in respect of the spear by the means of constitutional arrangement. And we all know that uh, devolution under the federal government arrangement seem to transfer political, administrative and economic activities uh, from the central to the local government and to further to seek to promote popular participation in decision making. As I said earlier, and that will also introduce efficiency uh, in the way the government operates, as well as making the government more effective uh, in terms of uh, resources allocations, uh, in terms of good governance, uh, in terms of creating wealth, in terms of investment, uh, so that the local government, because the local government are the, are the most front runner of any tiers of government in the country. And these are the areas the government need to promote. Powers should be devoted a lot to the local government so that they can touch the life of people. Uh, because people need also need to go to their local councillors to be able to find out one or two things that is there going on in their communities. Uh, this is where this is where power should be devoted more and resources should be here marked more when it comes to devolution of power. Uh, Nigerians need to embrace that kind of. Uh, 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 government because the local government should be having that autonomy to be able to do a lot um, and that autonomy should be not has to be less control from the state and has to be less control from the federal government and if, if Nigerians can adapt the kind of tiers of government we have in UK uh, Nigerians will be much much better and that is what the new President, which Mr. Obi also said is going to implement. Uh, the evolution of power, the structuring is not actually working. So that constitution of 1999 either needs to be removed completely or has to be changed or amended. Because we know the evolution of power to the local government at the grassroots. Uh, we know, as I said, the enhanced uh, legitimacy of the government. And its programs and its economies also enable governments uh, to distribute public goods and services according to the local needs. So now, when we now dive back to what Peter Obi is, we know that Peter Obi um, said he will not join the campaign trail of presidential uh, candidates of the Labour Party. Uh, someone said that and said he has done his best by writing his endorsement. So Obasa just said, look, I've now endorsed Peter Obi which is a former president. Uh, people have also castigated on him, um, harassed him. Uh, we've had a lot of harassment from a lot of the spokesmen from the APC. We also have a lot of harassment from the spokesman from PDP. Uh, they've 
they've molested uh, uh, President Lucia Gumo Passenger. But the funniest thing is that all these presidential aspirants went to visit him in his hometown to seek his mandate. And because it does not endorse uh, Atiku and it doesn't endorse uh, Tinumbu, and these two candidates, uh, instead of them to play a kind of uh, the democracy that embraced, look, yes, that is his view. They went on a rampage and molest President Olusha Gumabasojo. So, um, but, but President Olusha Gumabasojo says, look, I have endorsed Peter Obi, but he is not going to be going on a campaign train or campaign trail with this Labour Party uh, because he has us, us already written his endorsement. And uh, based on the New Year message to all Nigerians, and he appealed to all Nigerians, uh, particularly the youth people, uh, to vote for Peter Obi as the president of Nigeria. And um, he has used benefit of my experience, and I've put it plainly. So these are the message from President Olusegun Obasanjo, and he also said, look, I did not belong to any political party, and he will not join any campaign train. He believe Obi is the best person to rule the country. He believe he has the quality of an ideal Nigerian president, and Nigeria is where we, he, where we are at this moment because of leadership failure. PDP, when they were ruling for 16 years, they have failed Nigerians. APC, I even make it worse. So we must decisively looking for a man and woman who have the characters, someone that has the ability, competence, attribute of skills, knowledge, and integrity. Someone that has a loving and fearing heart, uh, that has leadership skills, an ability to govern with wills and powers and take decisive decisions and also someone that can able to say look I'm here to serve I'm not here to govern I'm here to serve and to listen and when we made the mistakes we're gonna have to tell Nigerians we made the mistakes and it can able to be clean and clear to Nigerians and someone that has the energy that is young and that can able to move across all states of the country, at least in every given period of the month. Not someone that will sit in Abuja for six to how many months. And it's only when he want to commission a project, then he's going to visit that state. I mean, presidents of the country should be moving across a lot of the state all the time to be able to understand, to look at what is going on in that state. It's not about when the a state has to commission a project before a president can visit that state. And when a president visits a law of the state, that also helps the states. Um, uh, that also gives more confidence in the people that live in the state. And even the president can also look at what the, how the people are also going through, the suffering that is going on in the people, and see what, how they can collaborate with our state government in order to bring any problems each one of the states are currently encountering. So these are things that um, um, uh, the new president needs to do. And Peter Obis, he wants to redefine a good governance on Nigerians. Um, and he also wants, uh, and he has also encouraged a lot of women, especially the party national women, um, to that they should speak to a lot of people, whether in the national, the state, and especially in the grassroots, even in the rural areas, and to enable them to come together, rally in support for Peter Obi. And they believe that Peter Obi uh, is the most competent candidate uh, that will meet the expectation of Nigerians. Obi has the experience. And it's an impeccable character. It's over a year. It cannot be questions. 
uh, will make him the most suitable candidate Nigerians should trust uh, with their votes on election date, which is next month. Uh, we know that will be uh, the two-term governor of Anambra State, and we know he's a very successful entrepreneur and a banker, uh, a leader with sounds international economic background. Uh, we know he has also has a lot of degree, has attended a lot of prestigious university, and he has been elected to make Nigerians better. And a lot of growing youth currently have been calling for Obi to be a president. And they believe that they can bring that narrative to governors, uh, governors that will reorder the nations for the benefit of Nigerians. Uh, good governors, uh, which will be us to want to climb up. We know it relates to something that relates to political and institutional process and the outcome that are necessary to achieve a goal of development. A true test of good governor is the degree to which he deliver on the promises of human rights. Because human rights is the key factors that if you're going to implement a good governance, you have to develop the social economic development of your people. It has to start from the good basic amenities that people can enjoy. Um, there should be civil liberties. I mean, uh, everybody should be able to deal with each other in a very civilized way. Cultural orientations, uh, where everybody can, can, can admit as well as um, embrace everybody, everybody, everybody that live in Nigerian's culture, economic integrations, uh, where price of goods and services, especially on goods and services, can come up. Um, Inflation is completely down. Economic improvement, investment in the country, and promotion of uh, export and import, where Nigerians can even export more of their goods across the across the world so and um, politicals less political influence on the capital market and social rights so these are attributes of a good governance peter obi want to promote in nigeria uh, obi we know he's not going to disappoint nigerians because if it is elected he's very trustworthy person uh, he has a good integrity and can lead nigerians to greatness um, so we, they, we know currently that a lot of women are definitely working, mobilizing a lot of more women. And they want to use their numerical strength uh, to make sure that we'll be, uh, remain victorious in the next month. Uh, and we, they also, also said that women are once a national endorse with capacity to, to give that. And he has been pregnant, carrying us to the new Nigerians. We are almost at the point of birth and we are not ready to have a, a still birth or miscarriage. The strength that we need to give birth is our permanent vote, which is PVC. And they encourage all Nigerians to make sure that they have their PVC before the elections. And INEC uh, we have been clamoring that INEX offices are not distributing PVC as required. And we encourage INEC to make sure Nigerians are not de emphasized so that Nigerians can have their PVC and they are ready to vote on the due day. And you can use the strength in all the country to push and encourage the new Nigerians is bound. So Obi have said that if it is elected, it will make sure that educational record uh, remain at utmost. And it will also promote a health status in the country. And uh, if he's promoted that who are mentally and physically prepared, he believes he's mentally and physically prepared for the tax, uh, providing leadership for the sick nations as art. And uh, he appealed to, in an interactive section, uh, to the student of Nigeria, University of Nigeria, Enugu. Uh, I said it yesterday when he went to Enugu, University of Nigerians, Enugu. 
and, and the, there was a tie to that a debate on what is the state of Nigerian economy, the way forward. And he spoke uh, to that student and was the best equipped and prepared to move Nigerians forward. And um, yes, in a very references to president candidate of all progressive party, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Chinobu, he said in United States during the elections, they go for a debate. Somebody once asked Barack Obama a question. There were personal and he answered. But here in Nigeria, somebody wants to contest the election. We don't know his real age. We don't know his name. We don't know the school that he has attended. Nobody knows his real identity. And he said, my name is Peter Obi. I can say I, want, I went to CKC, went to the University of Nigeria in Suka. Both VC and DVC, today we are my schoolmate. We came to university the same year and we left the same year. The people that I went to the school with, I can see them here today, and my juniors and my junior. How come we cannot have people who do not have classmates? That is what B is referring to. Bola Ahmed Chinumbu. This is a very important in all our characters and people we can trust. So Obi is saying, look, regardless of where school you attended, make sure your identity is clean. It doesn't matter whether you go to university or you don't. Let people trust you. Let people people can identify where you come from, where you have what you have done. And even the labor cut explained that honest people does not pretend to be someone he is not, and is not afraid to tell people the truth about himself. And Obi also cited an example of a of a chief affair Baba Lola, which is a son, a legal uh, luminaries and a founder of affair Baba Lola University, who was described as upright Nigerians who is in a shame of his background. He said, after Baba Lala once told me, he has never had the opportunity of going to the former school. There's nothing wrong with that. There are so many people who have done well in life and never went to former school. This country is sick and we should never hand over to a sick person. I am not saying that anyone is sick. We have been here for over two and a half hours. We don't even want people who can stand for 30 minutes. If you say you will fight corruption, let's go to the road you have passed and see what is, what is the remaining there after you left. This year elections must be based on competence. This job requires physical, mental energy. It is not a retirement job. And Obi also said uh, during the speech that I also promised to end the insecant industrial unrest by university lecturers that has crippled Nigerian economies. And he also lambasting that frequent strike have been witnessed in Nigerian university and recalling that in his day at UNN as a student, they never witnessed any strike. Universities should be well funded. And there's nothing big about funding university. Funding a university is the collaboration of everybody. Education is not, not an expense, but an investment. We must make sure that nothing stops education. And encourage university education. Obi also said that students should be given a loan to studies and repay the loans after graduations that they have start, when they start working. So this is a lot that Obi said. And he also said that um, that him and his running mate, uh, Yusuf Danji, uh, were the best peers among the political candidates uh, for February next month, uh, election day. And they are younger than the others, and they have the desire and envy to do the job. The most prudent, will not, they will not steal Nigerian money, as they have made their mark before their foray into politics. And they want to return the country uh, for consuming nations to producing nations. And the country will start becoming more 
once they assume the power. We have tried of fake promises, which a lot of these APC and PDP have promised Nigerians, and Nigerians are completely tired of that for great promises. We want to make real promises. Uh, we cannot continue with the millions of people living in poverty. We cannot continue with people of 200 million people, and 130 million people are living in poverty. We have more percentage of people living in poverty than in India and China combined. Indians and China, they have a population of 2.8 billion, and we only have 200 million. So we have, more po we have more poor people than two of these combined countries. We can't combine, continue with millions of people not doing anything like levels of stealing. We are not a secure, but we have to say we, are, we can secure and unite Nigeria when we become elected. Uh, we no longer have the police harassing people as a promise and we will recruit more security agents and give them an insurance so that they can do their job and that's what it's supposed to be a lot of this police should have a significant insurance that cover them that cover their families that covers their lives give them more incentive give them more salaries uh, salaries that will motivate them give them a good houses so that they can have confidence, not allowing police to be living in police barracks. How appalling is that? Police should have their own flats so that they can come in. So these are things that Nigerians need to do. And in, in turn, to have a job, you want, to, you want those who have left the country to come back. Dandy and her are wealth creators. And no other group is as educated as we are. All we want is an opportunity to build Nigerians. It's your time to take back your country. I am contesting because I am the best candidate. We want Nigerians to change Nigerians. A new Nigerian is possible. And we all know that a lot of big endorsements has gone into it, especially the Southern Nigerians and the Middle Earth Forums. Even the former governor of Oneuze, Indigo. We also know Chief Inna Nwondu said that four zone in Nigerians and it's endorsed Peter Obi to become the next president of Nigerians. Even in those who said that the endorsement was not only because Obi is an evil man, but also the handiment of God. And he said that this dispensation was an opportunity for the youth and warning that their times have been taken away by the old oligarchy and holding them to reclaim their country. So we also know that the former governor of Anambra State, uh, Uzefu, even the uh, Olusha Gombasanjo as endorsed of Boys, as I indicated earlier, even Pa Ayo Adebanjo of Afeneferi also endorsed Obi. Even Chief Ed, Edwin Clark of Pan Nigerian Theatre Forums has also endorsed Kuki. And we also know that uh, Bitros Pongu of uh, Middle Bed Forums and other eminent Nigerians also endorsed Kuki. So Obi will restore many years that the locusts have eaten. Obi will heal the land. Obi will build a new Nigerians. It will rebuild Nigerians to the original manifesto destiny of becoming a superior among the nation for which Nigerians arrive, arises. Africa rises. The dignity and respect of the black man should be restored. So Obi is a competent person. Obi is a man that every Nigerian youth believes can trust to lead Nigerians to where they want to go to. So Nigerians, please use your PVC to vote for Peter Obi in the next elections that is coming up. Make sure that you turn up at the polling booth. When you go there, please, we want all Nigerians to go with their CCT cameras, to go with their phones to record any activities that is, might take place in that polling stations. Make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. 
make sure you disallow anything that will be threat. Anything that will be threat, make sure you report that. You have that information in you. So we want to be uh, to become the president of the next Nigerians. We don't want to have all this APC. Nigerians, you should know, you've gone through uh, a lot of years of hardship. So do not give these people your rights and sovereignty. Uh, let your democratic right, which is your right to vote, let it count next month. So I wish all Nigerians the best of luck, and I will speak to you uh, once I have any latest information. So have a great day, guys, and all the best. And you know, guys, you are great, and you have great people, because Nigerians are great nations. So we want Nigerians to utilize what they have, the skills that they have, the knowledge that they have, the integrity that they have that can shine through their life. Uh, let, that, let them use that integrity next month. So I wish all the best. I wish everybody one of the best weekend. So you take care, guys. And please don't forget to share this news to all people. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube channel so that we can be bringing more information as we come across. Then have a great day and see you next time. All the best. Bye for now.